I saw a question posted on social last week that I've seen asked so many times. So I thought it might be really helpful to answer it. And the question that I saw posted was, what is the best and the easiest social media network to use for my business? Now, I'm sure we've all had that question and I'm sure we all think about it probably on a weekly basis, wanting to know whether what we're doing is the most effective and the best thing for our business. We'd probably be a bit strange if we weren't thinking about, are we making the most effective use of our time and our effort, to be honest. So I thought I would answer this question. What's the best and the easiest social network to use for my business? Of course, as with everything in business and in marketing, there is no simple answer, which is why it's easiest to address this live. Because every business is different and every audience that you're trying to reach is therefore different and every business has different goals. Even two businesses that look identical will probably have different ways of doing things, different things that they want to say and maybe different people that they want to reach. But the things that are the same are the things that we need to think about to answer this question for ourselves. So I'm going to go through the things that we need to think about to help us decide which is the best and the easiest social media network for us to use for our business. The problem is, of course, when it comes to choosing a social media network or any form of marketing strategy or tactic for our business is that there are so many people out there all saying, use this way or use this way or this is an amazing new method that someone just told me about and it really works or, oh no, you don't want to use that, that's so out of date, use this. And it's just crazy overwhelming. But these questions will help you to filter through not just which social media network is going to be the best and easiest for your business, but will also help you to stay on top of all those other shiny new objects that might get thrown into your path or that you see people emailing about or posting about on social. So the first consideration is, no surprises here, what is it that you want to achieve with your social media? Yes, ultimately we all want customers and we want sales, but how do you want to achieve that with your social media? What role is social going to be playing for you? Because that's going to dictate the best network for you to use. So do you want to raise brand awareness out there with the ideal people for you? Do you want to be chatting with people? Do you want to be sending people to your website? Are you very much hands off in your approach if you can be? Or do you like getting stuck in and, and having conversations? Or do you want to be people sending people to your website, as I've said? Or would you rather be out there networking with people who could potentially open doors for you in your business? Maybe they've got a network of people who could be amazing distributors for you or potential customers or clients for you. Or maybe they've got an audience that they might invite you to get in front of that would help you raise awareness to a particular sector or a niche. So have a think about how social media is going to play a role in you meeting your business goals and that will help you decide which network you want to use. For example, if you want to network directly with other people in business, then I'm sure that LinkedIn should be on your radar. If you really love getting stuck in and talking to people, then think about using a network that offers you the ability to easily engage with people. Facebook groups spring to mind or 
Instagram stories. But choosing between those two, of course, is going to depend upon how much time you can actively put into your social media, whether you can put time in now, and maybe you haven't got so much time later on, or maybe you've got a set amount of time you can put in every day or every week for the next foreseeable six months, for example. So think about your situation, your resources, and really what you want social media to be doing for you and how you want to be using it. There are so many ways to use it. So get clear on what you want to do for your business and then you can think about which network to choose to fit in with that. And allied to this, we want to think about what is the buying process that you want your customers or your clients to go through? Do you want to be able to just share posts on a social media network that people can buy directly from? Would you like, for example, to be using shoppable posts on Instagram or on Facebook? Would you like to be able to just share links that people can click on and buy automatically? Or are you not selling products? Are you selling a service? Do you need to have a strategy call or a discovery call? Are you really best off selling when you are in conversation with somebody? Well, how can social media help that happen for you? How can you be setting up strategy calls or chatting with people one-to-one? -one? Maybe you want to have chats in Facebook Messenger, for example, and you feel comfortable signing up new clients that way. Or maybe you'd like to send people to a web calendar where people can sign up and have a discovery call with you or even come into your office and have a one-to-one -one chat with you there. So think about how social media can actually help support your specific buying process, the process that works best for you. Could be that you want to bring people in store and you want to bring them in by sharing the news of a special offer. Again, that's gonna help you choose which network is right for you, maybe not only now, but also six months down the line. So think about if your buying process is going to change or what big promotions or events that you might have coming up that you need social media to support for you. Another thing to think about is what type of content you can easily create. Because content is obviously the lifeblood of having an effective social media strategy. Even if you're using social media primarily to go out and network, you want to have some stuff there posted on your profile or your page, depending on where you are, that gives people important information as to who you are and how you operate and what your vision is when they go and check you out. So you want to have content there. But we want social media to be as easy and as effective as possible for you. So if you are always trying to force yourself to create content that really just kind of goes against your natural flow or your natural instinct, that's gonna be a really hard slog and that's gonna come across in your social media activity. However, if you love producing, say, little 10 second videos or little snippets of information, you love showing people behind the scenes and you're quite happy in front of video camera on your phone and showing people the raw and real you, then maybe Instagram stories could be great for you. If you prefer to be slightly more polished and you like to have a little bit of a more businessy air about you, then maybe think about LinkedIn. If you love writing blogs and you want social media to help support you in sharing your blog posts, then maybe Twitter might be the best medium for you. I'm not saying that these are the only ways that you can support those types of content, but they might be the most natural social media networks that you might think about using if you enjoy using those types of content. If you love going live, like I'm doing now, then you might want to think about using Facebook or indeed Instagram or LinkedIn if you're lucky enough to have LinkedIn Live. So think about the type of content that you find easiest to create because that's going to help you use the social media network that is most intuitive for you to use and that is going to show 
people pick up when you're doing things that feel like a hard slog to you. You're not going to be enthusiastic or as enthusiastic as you could be. Your energy is going to be a little bit off. So choose the network that supports the type of content that you love to share. Of course, we can repurpose. So you could write a blog post and then create little video snippets that just highlight specific things you've talked about in your blog and use them elsewhere. But again, if you're going to use a repurposing strategy, then think about what's going to be, what type of content is it going to be easiest for you to produce when you're repurposing? And how could you most effectively be sharing that? What networks are going to suit that sharing strategy? Now you might think, well, Julia, you haven't yet talked about where my ideal customers or clients might be, what network they might be using. Surely this comes into the equation. And yes, it does, but it's not half as important as it was maybe four years ago or so when people tended to just use maybe one or two social media networks. Now you'll find very often that people use at least two social media networks. They might be on LinkedIn and Twitter, they might be on Instagram and Twitter, they might be on Instagram and LinkedIn, they might be on Pinterest and Facebook, whatever. So you will find that there will be a network for you that offers the best balance of all these things that we've been talking about and that there is a high probability that your customers or clients are also using. You might find, if you go and talk to your customers and clients, that they don't use Facebook newsfeed, for example, but they do use Facebook for jumping into groups. So that could give you a big hint as to what might be a great use of Facebook as a network. You might only want to have a group rather than a Facebook page, for example. Or you might find that you've got customers or clients who love using Instagram stories but don't look at the Instagram newsfeed. So think not only about the network that you love producing content for and all those considerations that we've just been thinking about, but if there are different ways of using that network, groups, stories, newsfeed, for example, then which features would your customers or clients be most likely to use? And find that out by talking to them or emailing them or by asking them on social media. But do find that out to make sure that you're using social in the most effective way for you. What else do you need to think about? This is an important question, no matter what network you're going to use, but what time can you set aside for social media? What time can you set aside to be creating posts for social? Would you prefer to only be posting once a day, say for example, using Facebook or LinkedIn? Or are you happy posting multiple times a day, maybe on Twitter or maybe on Instagram or Facebook stories? On Twitter, you really need to be posting more than one tweet a day if you want to have an impact because tweets whiz by so quickly. Same with using Instagram or Facebook stories. And the other side to this, of course, is engagement. You can't afford to be on social media these days and not be spending time actually engaging with people. Responding when people respond to your post, coming back to them as quickly as you can, but also going out there and responding to other people's posts. All the social media algorithms these days are based on several factors, but one of those factors is engagement. How much engagement you are attracting to your posts, but also how much you are going out there and having conversations with people straight off the bat. So how much you are engaging on other people's posts. So do think about how much time you can spend on engaging. And maybe then also think about how do you prefer to do that because that could help you choose the best social media network for you to concentrate on in your business. And it's worth saying here and now, that despite what some experts say, you really don't have to be on every social media network. There are some people that say, diversify, diversify, diversify. 
don't put all your eggs in one basket because that basket, that social media network, could disappear tomorrow. And that is true. And that's the reason why you do need to be building an email list as well as going out there and being active on social media so that you've got some way that you can communicate with people that you own. But don't feel that you've got to be on every social media network. A couple would be great. The other thing to think about is what time scale do you have by when you want to be getting results? If you really need to be getting results from social media quickly, then think about either being very strategic with networking and building up relationships because you can do that very quickly. And especially if you research and pick out people to go and talk to very proactively. Or the other approach you might want to take, of course, is using paid ads. And you can run these on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and on Pinterest. They will help you to really ramp up the results that you get from your social media strategy. And some sites are more affordable to use than others, and some sites have more targeting than others, but some sites have less competition than others. So again, some considerations to think about when you are choosing the best social media network for you. And you also therefore want to be thinking about, well, have you got a budget that you can set aside to use for ads? It might be that if you use ads on social media, for example, on Facebook, then that will help you to get your content in front of exactly the right people for you, and that might cut down on the time that you would need to put in, for example, to networking, or to going and engaging on other people's posts, or it might negate the need for you to, for example, set up a Facebook group if you decide to run ads from your Facebook page instead. So think about which approach is going to suit you as a business, and if you're a solopreneur, as a person, and think about what resources you've got available in terms of time, in terms of skills, experience, creation of content, and also budget. So I hope those questions have been helpful for you so that you can really use social media in the most effective way for your business. 